bit of a special episode on building your own PC and the excuse for this is that we happen to need to build a new gaming and video editing PC for our own house because the old one's getting old. Uh, but I thought it would be cool to share this age-old tradition for people who might be interested in doing it themselves if they've been stuck buying their own computers all these years and paying more for them. This used to be a really big deal for me back when I was a teenager and PCs were new, like Windows 95 days, because my first computer I spent like $2,400 of my own money to build this like uh, 486DX2 uh, computer for the old people who remember that kind of stuff. Thankfully it's a lot cheaper now, but it's still uh, very useful to be able to do this if you need the high-end performance that a dedicated system like this needs that you don't usually get in a laptop. And just for comparison, to, uh, to build up like an, to buy a pre-made Apple computer with this stuff that we are about to put in here, with equivalent power would be about like two twenty-five hundred or $3,000 today. And I've got about 700 bucks of stuff on front of the table, in front of me on this table right now. And uh, it's gonna be equal or greater than that. Um, one of the excuses that we use for a gaming PC nowadays is that we're into virtual reality, like using the Oculus Rift headset thing and it takes a lot of power right now to produce the graphics to be able to have that thing run smoothly so we are building up a vr gaming and uh, video editing computer that's also going to be used for music here in this new house and so the parts that are involved are each around hundred dollars is a case we're going to be reusing an old case which actually means zero for us but you can buy one on amazon for like 60 to 100 depending on the quality then you need a motherboard which looks like this then you need a processing unit, CPU. We're happy to use the newest AMD Risen one because it was a good bang for the buck. You need memory. We've, today we've got 16 gigs of DDR4 memory going into this new computer. You need a hard drive. Uh, those are pretty cheap nowadays, but we got a higher end one, which is a solid state drive for a much faster loading performance. Uh, power supply is what fuels everything. It's a big brick of copper, basically. And I got this free from a friend at my co-working space. Thank you, Jason. Normally this thing would be about $80. And then finally, if you're just using it for office work, there's video card built into the motherboard. But if you want a really, really fast PC, you need a dedicated graphics card like this. This one is an NVIDIA GTX 1070 card that I got off of eBay for about $200. These things used to be in the 400s just a couple of months ago. And thankfully, due to the cryptocurrency price crash, there's a lot less people trying to mine this crypto cryptocurrencies and they were using these cards to do the processing. Um, and now they're selling them all off, which is quite a funny market effect, but we'll take it because it's a great fast video card. So the first step is to take apart our old buddy, this computer from my desk back in around 2008. And we're gonna remove all the old parts Unfortunately, there's not always a use for these old PC parts other than recycling, but uh, sometimes you can donate them, especially if you make a whole computer work out of them. In this case, we're not even thinking about that. We're in a rush just to get this baby taken apart. So the next thing or the first thing we are going to put into the case is the new power supply. I've never had such a fancy power supply as this Corsair one before, but it looks like the higher end ones make it a little easier because everything's well labeled. So I just got to put all these cables that were provided with the Corsair into these plugs. Then I'm going to throw this whole thing into the case. And then all these plugs are labeled for where they go on the motherboard. Like this is the big, ATX connector which powers most of the stuff but there's another one that says it's for the CPU and other ones are for the PCI slots and for your hard drive and whatever else you want to power up. So for now it's just a matter of plugging and screwing it all in.
the motherboard is next. This is the most delicate and easy to wreck part of your PC, perhaps. So you just got to take your time when you put these in. Uh, luckily, it's easier than it looks because they're all the same. It's called an ATX format. And that means it mounts on five standard placed screw holes. And your case already has those set up. <clears throat> and the other thing you want to do is be careful about static electricity. So try to touch the case before you touch the motherboard. And if you uh, have access to a static strap, it's something you can look up. You can put that around your wrist. I used to work in a hardware lab and uh, you always are supposed to wear static straps. But if you're careful and if you don't move your feet around as you're doing this, you can avoid creating static electricity that will zap your motherboard. So just be careful and throw it all into the case. So the next step is to plug in all these wires into our nicely reinstalled motherboard and uh, there are about 15 things you have to plug in. Luckily they're all different shapes so it's kind of like just solving a puzzle and your instruction manual for the motherboard is going to have a diagram of itself and a list of the stuff. So you just kind of poke your way through and you learn a lot about computers as you do this. One thing, uh, one of my little tricks is that I like to use a headlamp on my head as I do this. Uh, to make it easier to read all the tiny stuff in the dark box as you install it. So let's get everything plugged in if we can. This is the exciting part. We're about to put in the CPU and its cooling fan and the memory in this step. This one is the last two really serious connectors, which is the CPU fan plug and the CPU power supply. Okay, the last and largest piece of this computer is the giant video card which you're going to try to squeeze into the chassis and then after that plug in its custom power supply. So the final moment of truth for this thing is to put power in and see if it blows up or if it runs. We have never tried this new PC before, so I'm a little nervous. And a lot of times it won't work on the first try. Maybe you forgot to plug something in. But let's see what happens here. Just flip on the power supply. Okay, that's good. Press the power button. I hear fans. And then uh, we just hope that something appears on the display eventually. All right, this is awesome. After about 10 seconds of uh, stress thinking it wasn't working, I got this nice logo from the new motherboard. 
So I press the setup key, which is delete, and now I got the usual BIOS setup screen where it says F1 to run setup. Uh, we're not going to cover this stuff in this particular video, but this, the basics is I'm going to set this thing to load from a USB stick, and I've got a little install version of Windows 10 on here, and, and then we're going to let that install, and then we'll see if we end up with a PC at the end of it. Amazingly enough, we got this thing working on the first try, so Windows is installed. I plugged it into the Ethernet and let it just download everything and update the apps, and we have a complete super fast, crazy fast gaming PC built up for around $700 in this case. And uh, on our next episode, we're going to try getting a used Oculus Rift VR headset off of eBay, plugging that in, setting up the room and seeing if it works for that. <laughs>